Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. And um, don't forget, Sunday afternoon, we have our Zoom call-in live stream at 5 o'clock Eastern. Hope you guys tune in. We have a ball with that. We have some great, great fans that, that call in, and uh, we have some great conversations about the Dallas Cowboys. We started it after the football season ended because of Sunday. There's no games. We still have a need for wanting to talk about football, so we started doing Sunday live streams. And it became the vent session for the Dallas Cowboys, um, where we, the fans, got a chance to just kind of be pissed off about what we were seeing or not seeing during the offseason. And it's evolved into, well, whatever it is right now, which is the Dallas Cowboys hopefully getting a good group of rookies in here to start really building the team. So tune in, 5 o'clock Eastern. We always have a ball with that. So I'm sitting here last with the thought and I was thinking about the defense okay I am really really excited about our defense the problem for the Dallas Cowboys defense is we've had some really great players since the 90s but we haven't really had a really complete defense for example I think about in 2013 we had Demarcus Ware and Jason Hatcher at defensive ends, you know, and Sean Lee at linebacker, good linebacker and stuff when he wasn't hurt, and great edge rushers, but we had a soft underbelly. We didn't have a defensive line to go with it, or we've had a few good cornerbacks, but we didn't have a pass rush to go with it to help him, and our cornerbacks are left out there to drive because, well, there's no pressure on the quarterback or because it's a soft underbelly. The quarterbacks would always be able to step up, which negates the pass rush on the outside. See, what you have to understand is this. In defense, it only takes one guy to mess up to give up a big play, and that's the truth. You can have the best edge rusher in the world, but if you don't have a defensive line to go with him, he's only going to be so impactful. And see, I think about games where – We've seen quarterbacks step up and take off because we don't have lane discipline. See, when you pass rush, or if you are, you know, generally speaking, you have a zone that you are responsible for. There's a gap or a spot. And what you want to have is you want to have equal pressure across. If you end up having the defensive ends getting way upfield too far, and then the defensive linemen rush outside, well, that's the perfect situation for a quarterback. Because now, there's nobody in front of me blocking my view. I can see that receiver breaking across, and now I'm thrown to that point. I remember in 2020, it drove me crazy because I remember seeing Tyrone Crawford playing defensive tackle, and he would end up rushing outside of Demarcus Lawrence. And the quarterbacks were just feasting on this. That entails the problem for our defense. I believe that this year, that this is probably the most complete defense, position by position, that we've had since probably the 2007 season. 2007 season. I, I just want you to think about this defense that we had. We went 13-3 and three under Wade Phillips. Surprisingly, when I look at, let, let me move up some, because I'm looking actually, I'm actually amazed at where they were standing with the players that they had. But when you just looked at the players, let's see, defensive ranking, points allowed was 13th, yards was 19th, and takeaways was 15th. It's really actually a middle of the pack defense, which surprised me because you start looking at position by position where the Dallas Cowboys were. We had DeMarcus Ware, a young DeMarcus Ware, who became a first-time All-Pro. You had Brady James as a linebacker, really good linebacker. You had Roy Williams, pro bowler, strong safety. Like I said, DeMarcus Ware uh, playing right um, outside linebacker. Basically, 
Um, the difference between being outside linebacker and defensive end is outside linebacker is standing up and can go into coverage. Very rarely does. It's really like a defensive end that's standing up. You had Jacquez Reeves, um, left cornerback, not not outstanding, but really good. You had Pro Bowl safety Ken Hamlin, Ken Hamlin, boom, free safety. Um, Terrence Newman, Pro Bowler, cornerback. Chris Canty, defensive end, which is really more like defensive tackle in this set, but you know he played defensive end and defensive tackle. Uh, Anthony Hendry, Greg Ellis, who was another outstanding. Greg Ellis had. 12 and a half sacks that season. I think DeMarcus Ware had 14. Uh, Anthony Spencer, um, another linebacker, Pat Watkins, Jay Ratcliffe at the nose. And I will say the rat, Jay Ratcliffe is probably the best nose tackle we've had since the 90s. And we have not had anybody who has played as well as Jay Ratcliffe. The thing with Jay Ratcliffe was his career here was short. There was issues between him and the team and so on. He went on to Chicago. But as far as being able to plug the middle, Jay Ratcliffe could do that. We had Jason Hatcher. We had Marcus Spears. Um, Tank Johnson from uh, the Bears. That defense, that defense was actually position by position. You looked at that and said, okay, we got a good defensive line. We've got a really good defensive line with, you know, like I said, having Jay Ratcliffe in there, having Anthony Spencer in there, having um, DeMarcus Ware, Marcus Spears. We had some great defensive linemen in there. And as far as our outside linebacker slash defensive ends, having Greg Ellis, having uh, DeMarcus Ware, um, having, you know, it, it was an incredible front. And then you turn that in. With having a Brady James as a linebacker back in there, you looked at that and said, okay, that's a really good defense. You didn't look at that defense and say, we got holes. They could end up keeping the quarterback in the pocket and having it collapse on them. You ended up getting, from your two starting defensive ends, 26 sacks. That's really great. That's freaking outstanding. And then you looked at your secondary, you had two Pro Bowl safeties and a Pro Bowl cornerback. We had four Pro Bowlers on that defense. And that defense was about as good as we had. That was a year that, oh my God, that team, that was a lost opportunity. I believe on that team, we had 13 Pro Bowlers on it. That was probably the most complete team that we the 90s, and unfortunately, we lost in the first round of the playoffs. Fast forward to now. This defense is young. I'm hoping that five years, ten years from now, I'm looking at this defense in the same way that I look at the players that we have had on 2007's defense. You know, you looked at that and said, those were all really, really good players. There are not a lot of big name players on there. I mean, we know we had two pro bowlers between Micah Parsons and Diggs, but when you start looking at this position by position, the Cowboys are better suited than they've been in a long, long time across the board. We've got defensive ends. Now, I'm not going to say that, um, that we're not going to miss Randy Gregory although we might not miss Randy Gregory. But when we start thinking about, we've got Marcus Lawrence. Marcus Lawrence, great run stop, consistent, doesn't get the number of sacks that he used to, 14 and a half being as high, 10 another year, but now kind of rolls around six, five, six or so a year. This year, I think it'll be better because of the people around him and him not have any off-season surgeries. I look for him to get back to eight or nine sacks this season. I'm just saying, just because there's so many things that teams have to focus on that he is going to be better and hopefully he plays the whole season. You, you might even see a 10-sack season out of him. But backing him up, Dante Fowler, a guy who is trying to um, resurrect his career, and I'm not going to say that it was a bad season. When you look at what he had around him in Atlanta, he had six sacks. 
But that was the leading sacker on the team. They didn't. He could be a hell of a backup. And then we have Terrell Basham backing him up. So you look at that and say, okay, we're good at leaf left defensive end. That's really good. Hannon ends up uh, moving up as well as John Ridgeway. I think that those guys are going to be definitely pushing Tristan Hill, possibly off the roster. But you have to look at that and say, well, this is the best nose tackle situation we've had since Iraq. See what John Ridgeway does, because I think John Ridgeway could end up pushing everybody, including the offensive line. Then we go ahead for defensive tackle. We've got Navelle Gallimore. Gallimore, who hyperextended his his season was shortened. He only played six games. That guy has a hell of a motor. And I think he could end up being great. His backup, um, OC, uh, and I gotta have a hard time with the name. OC um, and Digazua. Okay. You got him, and then you've got the veteran. Carlos Watkins. You got depth across there. Defensive end on the other side, we got Torrance Armstrong, who I think is going to be pushed by Sam Williams. And then we also have Chauncey Golston going into his second year. So you look at that and say, okay, that's a really good rotation. Linebacker wise, Leighton Van Der Esch, who's had his issues, but if you can get him back to where he was as a rookie, he's really good. But pushing him is going to be Jarrell Cox. So you start looking at that and saying, hmm, okay, okay. I, I, I can deal with Blayton Van Der Esch. Jarrell Cox comes back from the injury. That's, that's a solid rotation. Of course, Mike Linebacker. My mic sounds nice. Check one. Yeah, my mic definitely sounds nice. Micah Parsons is backed up by Luke Gifford, the special team standout. And then eventually, Damon Clark. We don't know if he'll play this year or not, but he's chomping at the bit. So you start looking at that and saying, that's a lot of young guys. That's a lot of potential, and that's a lot of speed. From there, we've got, for our safeties, Malik Hooker. And Malik Hooker is backed up, surprisingly, by Donovan Wilson. This is the best tandem right there. Both of these guys since that 2007 season. The fact that we went into last year with Donovan Wilson pencing him in as our best safety, and now he's a backup, uh, you feel pretty good about that. Um, Kevin Joseph, left cornerback. Uh J. Ron Curse, strong safety. You got to feel good about Curse. This is definitely the best combination of safeties we've had since that 2007 season. Of course, you got Diggs, and um, of course, with uh, Nonchon Wright backing him up. And then we've got Anthony Brown as the nickel cornerback. So you start looking at this defense, potentially, not only do we have some really good frontline players. You've got a rotation of guys that you can actually put in there and feel confident that you're not stepping down. That's something that we've had as a problem. We haven't had decent interior defensive linemen, much less a second level of them. We've had a couple here and there. You know, we've had some guys that tr truly should be defensive ends that are playing defensive tackles, you know, like David Irving and things. You know, he's David Irving was so tall but he was still kind of lean. We actually have now traditional defensive tackles and nose tackles, guys that are actually built for the punishment, guys that are actually there that can push a pocket and collapse it, guys that can hold up against the run. And these are things that we have not had since that 2007 season. And I believe, you know, when you look at the rankings of where that defense was, this defense 
collectively will definitely be rated a lot higher than that defense. So this is where we should have actually a lot of hope on this um, team. I will take the rotation of guys that we have here on that front seven, and I'll just about put that against anybody. I'm being, I'm being honest on that one. I will put this on here. When you have a guy like Dan Quinn, who I know he's, he's sleeping with a smile on his face right now. He's dreaming up ways to use all the speed, ways to use these different players, ways to come up with different looks and formations that will confuse the offense. And with these guys that you have, knowing that you've got an X-Man in Micah Parsons, you're going to be able to do a lot of things that are really going to be able to help this team be led by the defense. Not the defense being carried, but the defense leading them. All right, good people. That's all I have for you to get started this morning. Um, we will definitely see you guys today at 5 o'clock. I'll put the Zoom link in the community tab. If you are a channel member, any channel member at any level, you can join in on the conversation. Just remember, um, one person talking at a time. And try not to talk about others and be respectful of others on there as well. And with that being said, let's roll out of here.